Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, and today we're at the lamp bench where I'm going to be rewiring these two decorative sconces. I call them decorative because all of these features on here were once functional and now they're purely decoration. This design motif started out in life as a uh, oil burning chandelier. It looks something like this. The globe here at the bottom would have been the oil tank, of course. And then when someone wanted to take that idea and turn it into more lights for the house, they made wall sconces that looked like chandeliers that had been cut in half. One small interesting detail that I did notice, you can see one is shiny and the other one definitely has a little bit more age on it. Um, they're identical, all the way down to all the details of the casting and the machining and all that kind of stuff. But this one, the older one, has a hanging hardware, which is fastened in with screws. And the shiny one has hanging hardware, which is held in with uh, some kind of epoxy. And I'm going to rewire these, a new socket, new switch, and of course, new wire. And this little 90 degree turn here always presents a problem and since I've got two of them I'm going to show two ways to do this. A good vice is like having three hands. I've made these pads for it out of thin plywood, a couple of rare earth magnets across the back and it snaps right in. And there's some carpet padding on this side gives me a nice gentle way to grab something like this and hold it in place while I'm working on it. Now I found something interesting that I hope shows up on the camera which is this burned wire right here and the main reason for that is because when they put this together this wire was not properly installed these strands like that, it's really very, very difficult to get a wire tight under a screw when it strands like that. And uh, not very likely to uh, stay tight for very long. Loose connections get hot. The heat creates this burn mark here. And in this case, I think it's actually damaged the uh, socket. So when we're putting the wires back in. We're going to see how to deal with that so that this kind of thing doesn't happen. First, I want to get one of these wires out of the pipe just to make it easier to pull. And a little bit of lubrication in the form of uh, furniture polish. Bend one down, keep it in place, and try to figure out which one I'm pulling on. There we go. And we're running into a problem here, I want to point out. This cloth covered in, uh, jacket on the insulation is peeling off. This is coming out clean. That means that somewhere inside here, there's a bunch of this fuzzy stuff. That could be a problem later on. Well, that was fortunate. I'm going to connect the old wire to the new wire with solder. And I don't want to put any more solder on here than I have to. Because you still got to go around that corner. And a solder joint is pretty stiff. Now before you start pulling for real, test your connection before you get it in the pipe.
Now it's a combination of pushing on one end, which creates a little bit of slack, and then you can work the other to pull it through. And that's the easy way. So what do you do when there is no wire? And that happens quite often. Someone will pull it out by they're taking it apart or when you get it, it just doesn't have any wire. But you take the wire that you're gonna replace it with and you strip back the insulation so that you bear about an inch, inch and a quarter of the copper wire. And you turn it up so I'm going to be looking down that pipe right there. Because if, if I'm lucky on the first go round, I can push this all the way up. And I can look through here. I actually see a little piece of that copper sticking out. So I've got a tool here made from a piano wire. And I'm going to reach in there and I'm going to try and snag that piece of copper and drag it out and it's just a matter of being persistent until you can get it through enough there it comes there we go and that is how it's done now to put it back together start with the babiche this little sleeve they had on there. And I always add blue thread lock before I put a lamp together. That means that when I get it down nice and snug, it's going to be tight without me having to break something. And then I'm going to slip a nut down the wire. And the trick for getting that uh, on the uh, thread down there is a deep socket that I have ground the bevel on the end so it can get down and just give it turn it there we go almost there Now, with the wire sticking up through there, kind of difficult to get it tight. But thanks to my blue thread lock, I don't have to get it real tight. I just have to get it good and snug, and when that stuff sets up, that nut will be on there. It'll take a good bit of force to break it loose. You certainly won't break it loose just uh, changing a light bulb or something like that. A little blue goo on the socket. And just a gentle touch of the pliers. Now we come to the part where we prevent another wire from getting burned up. And as I said earlier, the splayed wires cannot be tightened properly under a screw terminal. The National Electrical Code dictates that that's just simply not the way it's done. So the solution to that is to put a little bit of solder on each of these wires and turning these multi strands into one single strand. Now this is an adjustable height socket, so you always set your wire with the socket at its full height. The customer probably won't have it that way. That's a decorator decision. But you want to make sure there's enough wire that this thing can extend all the way up. Now, lamp cord sold in the United States has one smooth side, one side with ridges on it. You can feel it. One 
screw on the uh, socket is silver and one screw on the socket is brass colored, sometimes copper colored. The side with the ridges always goes under the silver screw. And that tinned wire now lays down nice and gently underneath that screw and I tighten it down and I can be confident that it's going to stay tight. And you always wrap them around clockwise so that when you tighten the screw it pulls the wire under it instead of pushing it out. Now the distinction between the smooth wire and the ridge wire also is important when it comes to installing the switch. The switch is always installed to the smooth wire. This is for safety reasons. It's more important in table lamps than it is maybe in a wall sconce, but the principle is the same. Is that the smooth wire goes to the center terminal in the light socket. And it means that if you were to encounter a lamp which didn't have a bulb in it, you're in the dark fumbling around, you'd actually have to stick your finger all the way down inside the socket before you get shocked. How often that situation comes up in real life, I'm not sure, but it's there for a reason, I'm sure. All connections in the Secret Underground Laboratory are soldered. I don't use wire nuts, and I certainly don't just twist the wires together and cover them with tape. After the solder joint is made, clip it off nice and clean and then I cover it with a piece of uh, shrink tubing. This is a peculiar kind of plastic that uh, as the name implies when it gets hot it shrinks. Then I fold it over and put another piece over the end of it just for a little extra protection. Now most sconce rewires I do, I install a regular lamp cord uh, so that the people who uh, take it home can just hang it on the wall above any electrical outlet and drop the cord down and plug it in. In this case, this is going to be installed by an electrician and they have service boxes high up on the wall where the sconce will go. And for that reason, I have added this sort of a white pigtail because when the electrician gets there, He's going to see a service box with a white wire and a black wire. Now, the white wire corresponds to the side with the ridges, and the black wire corresponds to the smooth wire. And so just to keep everything nice and straight, I color that smooth wire in black, and everything will get wired up nice and correct. Because there's no point in keeping track of which wire goes where, if the electrician is going to wire it up backwards anyway. This is Brian Sage for the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And I thank you for sitting through this video which featured how to get wires to go around a corner. would really like it if you would click the like, subscribe if you haven't already. I put out about one video a week and I hope to see you again next week. And again, thanks for watching.